Okay, so we're doing rationalizing the denominator now, are we? All right, well, let's read that again. Rationalizing the denominator. There's some of the num there's some of these words which should start making sense to us. First of all, what is a rational? Well, a rational is any number of the form that can be written of the form a over b, where a and b are members of, that's what that sign means, remember, members of the integers. And since we're not allowed to divide by 0 because things blow up, by the way, I haven't shown you why yet, and we can talk about that later, but that's a rational number. This is not a rational number. This is a rational number. It could be written as 3 over 1. 3 is an integer. 1 is an integer. This could be written as root 3 over 1. This is an integer. This is not an integer. Okay? So these are, in fact, called irrational numbers. Okay? So if I'm going to rationalize the denominator, what that means is I'm going to make sure that whatever is in the denominator is rational. And what that means is that what's ever in the denominator, if that's the numerator, if this is the denominator, I have to make sure that whatever's in the denominator is a rational number, which means it can't be a square root or a cubed root or a fourth root or any type of root like that. That's not a perfect square. Okay. Radical expressions are never to be expressed with a radical in the denominator. However, a radical in the numerator is acceptable. There's two things to do here, and we've got two situations. Now, on your test, you're going to have both. On the exam, you're going to have both. There's only two. Let's make sure we know how to do them. To simplify a radical expression with a monomial radical. Monomial, one term. So to simplify radical expressions with a monomial radical in the denominator, one term radical in the denominator, what we do is multiply the numerator and the denominator by this monomial radical. All right, let's stop there and just look at these ones. Monomial denominator. Monomial radical denominator. Monomial radical denominator. Compare that to binomial radical denominator. Binomial radical denominator. Binomial, okay? We get that? So now what we want to do is we want to rationalize the denominator. The denominator is not a rational number. It's not. It's an irrational number. It's root 3. So we want to get rid of it. This says I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the monomial radical. Let's see what happens if I do that. Well, first of all, it took me a long time when I was in school to figure out that this was simply 1. And if I multiply by 1, I'm not changing anything. Okay, so as long as I do the top by root 3 and the bottom by root 3, this whole thing is 1 and I'm not changing anything. So top times top, because it's a fraction, it's a, ra it's a rational number. Uh -huh. uh, it's not a rational number. It's a fraction over a fraction. So it's 1 times root 3, which will be root 3. And the bottom is root 3 times root 3, which is root 9, or root 3 squared. Either way, it works out to 3. Now, you've got to get something straight here. 1 over root 3... 1 divided by, I don't know how this calculator works, so I'm going to take a guess. Where's my square root sign? La, 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 la. Um, do you see it? There it is. So it's going to be second function, square root 3. So that's going to be 1 divided by square root 3. Boom, that's the answer. So 1 divided by square root 3 is that decimal. Let's do root 3 divided by 3. So it'll be second function, root 3 divided by 3. Da -da -da -da. That's the same number. They're equivalent. 1 over root 3 is equivalent 
identical in value to root 3 over 3. But the difference is, da 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 da, this is a rational number. You have taken the denominator from an irrational number to a rational number, and the process is called rationalizing the denominator. Language. If you know what the words mean, everything falls into place. Monomial denominator. We multiply the top, we multiply the bottom. This is 1, so I'm not changing the question. Brackets are your friends. Distributive property means share. Let's share the root 2 with everybody inside the brackets. So now it's 2 root 6 minus 7 root 2 over top of root 2 times root 2, which is root 2 squared, which is 2. You have taken a irrational number in the denominator to a rational number in the denominator by rationalizing the denominator. This is one that throws people off a little bit. But if you think about it, it's really easy. You have a choice. You could multiply the top by 2 root 5 and the bottom by 2 root 5, and you'll get there. But it's going to take you longer. The only part I really care about is the root 5. If I multiply the bottom by root 5, it'll be 2 root 5 times root 5, which is 2 root 5 squared, which is 2 times 5, which is 10 on the bottom, 2 times 5. And the top is 3 root 5. And that is wonderful. Notice if we ignored our logic and if we just didn't really think about what we were doing, but just followed what we were doing. Again, this is 1, so there's no problem there. We're not changing anything. The top is going to be 6 root 5. The bottom is going to be 2 times 2 is 4. Root 5 times root 5 is root 5 squared, so it's 5. So it's 6 root 5 over 20. Notice the 6 and the 20 will reduce 3 root 5. You can't see anymore. 3 root 5 over 10, which is the same answer I got, but a lot faster. I didn't have to do this reduction of an extra 2 because that's where the extra 2 came from. Oh, you can't see. I didn't have to do this reduction of the extra 2. That's where the extra 2 came from because I multiplied the top by an extra 2. I divided the bottom. I multiplied the bottom by an extra 2, so eventually I had to get rid of those 2. This is 2, 3, root 5. This is 2, 5, and another 2. So I had to get rid of those 2. That is my phone. I'm going to put you on pause, and we'll be back in just a moment to do the second part.